Hey guys, Garrett here, and today I wanna to take you around the shop and show you the 12 things that I think every single shop should have. Now I'm not gonna get into the tools and that sort of stuff that uh, a person's gonna to need to work in their shop, but let's just start with what the actual shop needs. The first thing I would say a person needs is a good concrete floor. Without a concrete floor, it's really hard to work in the shop itself. You're really just building a storage shed at that point and not necessarily a workshop. So regardless, put in a concrete floor, spend the extra money up front, you will not regret it. And don't just put a four inch slab in. I'd say a minimum of five. I went with a seven inch slab and I have number four rebar run every three feet, both horizontally and vertically. Along with that, definitely have a healthy amount of cardboard around. Otherwise, if you're like me and you work on vehicles, you're gonna make messes and it's a heck of a lot easier to clean these up than it is to get stuff that stains in that concrete. Number two would definitely be insulation. Not only in the walls, but also in the ceilings. Remember, if you're building a metal building and it has metal siding on the outside of it, it's going to sweat if it's very humid outside and it is gonna literally rain from above. So even having a small amount of insulation up on the roof, like I've got, which uh, this actually came from a chicken house and it was used, so it's not pretty, but it is totally functional. It is one inch of uh, insulation with foam on both sides and then that's just bat insulation over there, R13. Regardless though, it holds the heat when you need it to and uh, keeps the sun at bay whenever you need it to. So definitely insulate. Number three is definitely electricity. And I've got a 200 amp panel here. You don't necessarily need one that is that big. I would recommend the minimum size would be a 60 amp panel, but ideally 100 amps or more. And you definitely want 220 because you're probably gonna have things like air compressors, welders, I've got a heater up there, a two post lift, all of that kind of stuff that takes a fair amount of electricity. On top of that, make sure you put lots and lots of plugs all over the place and make sure whenever you're putting these in, you run separate circuits, even if it's in the same area that you're gonna be using. You don't wanna be welding and cutting and doing all kinds of stuff and start tripping a bunch of breakers because you're putting too much power through it. So that's on one circuit, that's on another circuit, and you know, they're only four feet apart. So think about that whenever you're going along. Also, as far as lighting goes, consider putting all of the lighting on its own circuit and think about doing multiple switches. So right now I have one switch on which has these lights. And as you can see, these lights are not on, they are on their own switch. Number four, retractable electrical reel. And I would definitely get one that has a triple tap at the end of it. Mine is actually an Amazon commercial unit, and I've got a link to it in the description down below, so if you wanna get one like that. I looked it up, had great reviews, and I've had this for a long time, works fantastic. I actually have two. So I've got this guy, which is right next to the main door going into the building, and then I've got another one that sits right next to that door over there. And the main reason is, Gosh, you just end up tripping over cords and hoses and all kinds of stuff like that all the time if you don't have one. But if it's retractable, once you're done with it, you just retract it and it's out of the way. Number five would definitely be lights. Don't skimp on the lights. And they can be kind of expensive. I've got LED strip lights running on all of these that you see and I've been adding to them as time goes on. So you can see actually these three are all linked together. There's a couple that are linked together, but like all of these individuals were the ones that I put in originally with the shop. And with that said, I can't get those lights anymore. You know, they update these things so often. So I would make a suggestion. Here's a brand new light that I have yet to install. I'll get to that at some point, but make sure they are linkable. And I'm not just saying, 
any form of linkable. I mean, they need to have this three pronged end here, basically an outlet on the end of it. That way it's not a custom linkable deal where you have to have the same manufacturer, the same light. You can plug any one of them into this and you're good to go. And like I said earlier, put the lights on different switches. Remember each one of these draws, for me at least, 50 watts a piece. So you get a bunch of lights in like this big old building, it actually takes quite a bit of wattage. So think about putting them on different switches and then something like this right here is positioned right in front of my two post lift here. So it's on the engine side of it, meaning that I can turn that on and it lights up the entire front end of the vehicle, making it a heck of a lot easier to work on things. So be strategic with your light placement. Number six is shop air. And obviously you're gonna need a decent sized air compressor, but I went ahead and made my own distribution network within this, uh, this shop out of copper as well as PEX. None of the PEX is subject to UV, so I'm comfortable using it. But regardless, shop air, in my opinion, is really, really important. And when you're doing your shop air, go ahead and put some sort of an outlet next to every single garage door. I have one right over here next to that garage door, another one way back there next to that garage door, another feed right there. And of course, because it's PEX, I can add into it anytime. And this leads into number seven, which is a retractable hose reel. Just like the electrical, you're gonna have a bunch of hoses strung out and you're gonna be tripping over them all over the place. So. Again, this one is Amazon commercial. I bought two of them. One is right here and I have another one way over there. I've been using it for a while. Fantastic, uh, one of the better priced units. And again, a link down in the description if you wanna get one of those. It has great reviews and I definitely give it a thumbs up. Number eight is some sort of an automotive lift. If you're not into automotive things, you can skip this one, but I am. And honestly, I don't know how I did without this before I got it. Of course, you know, I was always rolling around on the ground and the concrete is really cold. I couldn't afford to put in heating and all that kind of stuff within that concrete. So having a lift, getting the vehicle up safely is definitely the way to go. And whether you get a two post lift like what I have here or a four post lift, you know, you're gonna have to make that determination on your own. Get one that is ANSI certified. Do not get the Chinese crap. You know, you're putting your life in, at risk by doing that. So get something that is actually certified and you're comfortable with it. This one is a 10,000 pound unit, so I didn't really need one quite that heavy duty. I ended up buying this from a guy down the road for 1,400 bucks. Originally, it was $3,000. You know, it was never in like an automotive shop or anything like that. It was just very, very lightly used. So I think I got a great deal on it. But again, make sure you get the ANSI ones and whether or not you want to do asymmetrical or symmetrical minus asymmetrical. That's again a judgment call on your part. Number nine is a stereo as well as a TV. And of course, big old speakers. These speakers I've actually had since middle school. So that have been the early nineties and they still work great. Giant 15 inch woofers in them. And of course the TV, you know, nothing special. I had that since college. So that's why it looks so old, but I can at least watch the weather while I'm out here and it's kind of nice to do because I'm in Kansas and a uh, tornadoes can come at any point. So I'd rather be prepared. Everybody wants music whenever they're working on stuff. And I just made my own stand out of leftover materials, did the same thing for the speakers and it works great. Number 10 is some kind of shelving. It doesn't really matter to me what kind of shelving you have, but you're going to need place to put things. And you know, I just made these out of two by fours and OSB and it was relatively cheap to do. Or you can get metal shelving kind of like this, or you know, you can get those really fancy pallet racking type deals and those are pretty awesome, but they're expensive. Or you can use a bookshelf like this. I don't know how much I would trust the bookshelves. If you add too much weight, they're obviously not rated for it, but if it's light stuff like this is, it works fine. Just use what you got. Number 11 is definitely pegboard. And you can store a lot of stuff on that pegboard, but the beauty is you can actually see what you have. I can't tell you how many times I've had in cabinets or drawers or stuff, just tools 
that again, I forget I have, or I just don't know where it is, but at least when you do this, you can see what you have. Same deal over here, a bunch of automotive stuff. Number 12 is some sort of a bench top, tabletop type deal. Again, you can make them yourself if you want to, but it's gonna end up with a bunch of crap on it like mine does, you know, and you gotta go through and reorganize every so often, but you know, uh, different types of tables. This is a welding table, a nice big welding table on wheels if I wanna move it around, or you can have a nice bench vise attached to it. You know, it's just nice having tables. And you don't have to build these things yourself. I ended up getting this for a hundred bucks off of Facebook Marketplace, and it's actually a Boeing surplus table that they used to have. So very, very well-built table. Actually, I mean, that is used, that one was used, that one I got from a different house. So, you know, you don't have to spend a ton of money to get some really good stuff. I'm pretty sure I could go on for days showing you the things that you need in a shop, especially when it goes to tools and that sort of stuff. But regardless, just having a shop is one of the best things that you'll get. And of course, if you can get these 12 things, you are well on your way. Honestly, I wanted a shop since I was 13 years old. I like cars, I like to wrench on things, and I need the space to be able to do it and to get out of the weather. So. Definitely build a shop if you are like me, or if you just have projects, even if they're woodworking projects. You need a space of your own that you can do projects and it's okay to get dirty. Make sure to subscribe down below as well as hit that like button. I'll see you guys next time.